Well, we all know that Dreadnought was the world's first all-big gun battleship to hit the water, albeit not the first one to start construction, and most of us have heard of Cunaberti's all-12-inch design that first saw publication in 1903. But between 1903 and 1905, what was the process that connected these two designs? The full story would be one that needs a full Wednesday video, but here's a quick five-minute primer with a note that past the first two designs, various sources differ on the precise order that these designs were arrived at. We start with Admiral Fisher, because of course we do. It's the Dreadnought after all. Whilst in the Mediterranean, he'd busied himself working on an ideal battleship that he called HMS Untakeable, along with an ideal armoured cruiser he called HMS Untouchable. In its earliest form, HMS Untakeable was pre-Dreadnought style, with a pair of twin turrets for a main battery, 10 inches in this case, for similar reasons of rate of fire at close range that the Germans were using to justify the 9.4 inch armed pre-Dreadnoughts that they were building at around this time. This would be supported by 12 7.5 inch guns in 6 twin turrets, 3 per side, with a pair amidships raised up one deck and a pair at each end beyond the raised main guns. The layout did look somewhat odd. However, it gave quite a bit of theoretical end-on fire, which was something Fisher really liked because of course he believed that he would be chasing his opponents and so end-on fire was pretty important uh, as compared to broadside firepower, which interestingly enough was not a theory that had really been advanced in naval gunnery circles since around the time of the Spanish Armada. But never mind. He then took on the ideas of all big gun armament that were circulating, and he updated his design by simply swapping the twin 7.5 inch turrets for twin 10 inch gun turrets, and thus proposing a vessel with no less than 16 main guns and a theoretical 10 gun salvo in all possible directions. He was, however, shortly thereafter persuaded that fewer, larger shells would do more critical damage than more lighter shells, and so a new version was drawn up. This one only had eight guns, and this time 12 inch weapons, also in twin turrets with one forward, one aft, and two amidships. This provided a six gun salvo in all possible directions. With 12 inches of armour and a speed of 21 knots, you'd look at this and think, well, it would only take a slight lengthening and the consequent addition of another rear turret, and we're there. But not so fast. His next idea was to up the number of guns from 8 to 12. Fisher was still determined to have a lot of end on fire, and the 1904 design committee, which he was chairman of, next looked at what could only be described as a battleship version of the Atlanta-class cruiser, only a few decades early, and if you think I'm kidding, just look at it. Six twin turrets in two triple-stacked super-firing arrangements, one forward and one aft. Uh, there was an additional design which was basically a battleship version of the Dido class, i.e. it lacked the third of the rear turrets, that had a total of ten guns. Uh, this was considered for economy and, to be frank, stability's sake. Another idea for an eight-gun version looked a lot like the US South Carolina class, but politically, by this point, the Royal Navy couldn't be seen to have a ship that had a similar number of guns, or even worse, fewer guns, when it came to new ship designs. And unfortunately for us all, the use of sighting hoods on the turrets led to the conclusion that whilst a 12-gun broadside in the triple stack arrangement would be utterly devastating, only the lower turret would actually be able to fire ahead or astern in a roughly 30 degree arc because the other two would just devastate the lower turrets with blast going through the sighting hoods, which obviated Fisher's desire for end on fire to chase down fleeing enemies, and though thus the next idea was brought forward. This reduced the broadside to 8 guns out of 12, but allowed for 6 gun end on fire and got rid of blast concerns in most directions. However, this weird triangular layout of turrets meant that the barbettes of the foremost and rearmost pair of turrets would also basically be the ship's belt armour, and there were concerns as to whether or not the layout would actually fit in a hull that was slim enough to hit 21 knots with the available machinery of the time. 
This led to moving the wing turrets more amidships, resulting in a layout similar to what would become the Nassau's and Helgoland's in Germany. This had 12 guns still, with all guns at the same level. A revision was made due to the need for better sea keeping at speed, which raised the forward turret one deck and switched over to turbine engines from triple expansions, reducing the footprint of the machinery and funnels and moving the wing turrets more centrally to allow for more compact magazine space, although this effort had more limited firing arcs for the wing turrets, leading to the guns being spaced out a bit more again, now with the elevated forward turret. And at this point, Prince Louis of Battenberg suggested that because of the major blast effects that would be suffered by this design on some arcs, as well as the fact that the ratio of weight of guns versus an 8-gun broadside wasn't that great, and 12 guns for an 8-gun broadside, not the world's most efficient, so he suggested improving this by eliminating a small amount of aft superstructure on the vertical triple expansion design, there'd been a funnel here, but with the turbines this wasn't necessary, and if you did this, you could replace the two aft wing turrets with a single centerline twin turret. This resulted in something that now looks a lot more familiar. This then, design H, would form the basis for the design that would result in HMS Dreadnought. And Admiral Fisher could stop terrorising the design committee and move on to terrorising somebody else instead. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.